It's a well-known fact that when a top-secret aircraft is being made, the general public don't usually find out about it straight away. In fact, it can take years for this type of information to reach the masses, and sometimes it's not because the military wanted to tell us, but because there was a leak or people had photographed said craft. One recent aircraft that's been talked about is that of the SR-72. The Lockheed Martin SR-72, also nicknamed the Son of Blackbird, is an American hypersonic aircraft currently under construction. It's the successor to the SR-71 Blackbird, a plane that was able to reach speeds of 3,529km per hour, or 2,200 miles per hour, and heights of 85,000 feet. The SR-72 aircraft will be the most impressive aircraft on the planet, having state-of-the-art hypersonic technology. Some websites are even reporting that the SR-72 will be able to strike targets anywhere in less than an hour. However, not everyone is entirely convinced that this aircraft is in its early stages, with some residents across the United States coming forward with their testimonies and photographs to prove that this hypersonic aircraft is currently flying around in our sky. As mentioned earlier, it can take a few years for the public to find out certain information, and it's known that we have the capability to build these kinds of crafts, because back in the 1960s we had the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. There was nothing around at the time that could match it. Even today it holds the record as being the fastest aircraft ever created. Back in the 1960s, this incredible aircraft was able to reach speeds of 3,529 km per hour, or 2,200 miles per hour, so knowing that we had this kind of tech back in the 60s, it's easy to see why people believe that the SR-72 is currently flying around in our sky. One person was driving through Wyoming a few years back when they said they saw a mysterious craft above them. They said that these objects looked like two giant black triangles, but said due to where they were positioned in the sky it was hard to get a decent photograph of them. However, they did manage to snap a photograph and you can clearly see that this aircraft is in the shape of a triangle. It's very rare for people to see these things during the daytime. The eyewitness said the following. On April 10th, 2010, I was driving east on Interstate 1815 when I looked north and saw two black wire triangular shaped flying crafts. I could see their shape as the lights from my truck reflected off one of the bottom of the slow moving crafts. There was a light on each of the points of the triangle. One light was red, one was blue and the third looked like a white or off white. One craft was following the other, and they were flying low west along Interstate 80. They were flying slow enough that I was able to watch them for a while. End quote. Something to note is that, as of right now, no military has come forward to claim that they own these crafts, although sightings of them have been made for at least the last 50 years. These black triangles are somewhat of a mystery, with UFO believers saying that they're not the same as our crafts, while others have said that the latest line of stealth aircrafts. Others have suggested that these large black triangles are actually the SR-72, and those who study these hypersonic aircrafts have said this does add up. Various eyewitnesses who have seen these black triangles have said they've been seen leaving an area at extreme speeds, and it would make sense as we're just learning about these crafts now, and in the past when we found out about new stealth aircrafts they've already been in operation for a few decades. So these sightings of black triangles that people have been reporting for the last 20 years, could be the SR-72 hypersonic aircraft. However, this isn't set in stone, and there's others who have said that we currently don't have anything that could match that of the mysterious black triangles. This begs the question then, what are these things? For over 40 years, the triangle UFO has caused much debate. It's perhaps one of the most common shaped UFOs that's been seen. These crafts are often reported as being silent, and have been seen on a number of occasions just hovering in the sky. Sightings of the triangle UFOs often come in waves, with people seeing dozens at a time. 
they are also perhaps the most photographed UFO as well, with even news programs covering them. What's most impressive about these crafts is that they've been witnessed hovering motionless in the sky, and then suddenly making a high speed departure. Pilots have said they're faster than any conventional aircraft that's currently in the sky. The SR-72 program was mentioned by the Executive Vice President of Aeronautics at Lockheed Martin, and this was during an aerospace exhibition in Fort Worth. They said the following, Although I can't go into specifics, let's just say the Skunks Works team in California is doubling down on our commitment to speed. Hypersonics is like stealth. It's a disruptive technology, and will enable various platforms to operate at two to three times the speed of the Blackbird. Security classification guidance will only allow us to say the speed is greater than Mach 5. End quote. As mentioned though, a lot of people don't buy this, and say that the aircraft is already in the sky. In fact, according to one source, they stated that an unmanned subscale aircraft was observed flying into the US Air Force's Plant 42, which is the headquarters of Skunk Works. When those that saw and heard the aircraft asked Lockheed Martin on whether or not this was the SR-72, they declined to comment. Other people across the US have said they've seen stealth looking aircrafts in the sky during the daytime, but note that they're too high and fast to photograph. As of right now, it's incredible to think we have an aircraft that's able to do these kinds of speeds. The Soviet Union made it their goal to dominate space. This would lead to the Soviet officials making last minute decisions that would give them a head start in the space race. However, those who have researched the Soviet space program have said they haven't been entirely honest with us, and that many cosmonauts would go on to lose their lives in the battle of the space race. The rivalry between the Soviet Union and the United States is well documented. Both wanted to have the bragging rights to see who was first in space. It's not just cosmonauts that shrouded in mystery. Since the space race, the Russians have sent various probes into space, and one of these was the Phobos-2 mission, which was launched on the 12th of July 1988. The probe was created with the sole purpose of travelling to Mars's two moons Phobos. The probe made the 254.3 million kilometre, or 1.5 million mile journey to Mars. It arrived on the 30th of January 1989, but lost communication. Before it did, however, it sent back a few mysterious photographs, some of which are used by believers to suggest that the probe may have encountered something otherworldly. One of the photographs that was sent back showed a huge cigar or disc looking craft, some of which say that the probe may have encountered an unidentified flying object. As mentioned, the official NASA explanation was that the probe experienced a malfunction on board, but according to some higher officials, this isn't what actually happened, and this is where things get interesting. In 1991, six former US Army remote viewers were brought in by Russian officials to help identify what actually went wrong with the probe. The thing is, this may sound like something that's made up, but it isn't. In fact, back in the early 1970s, it was said that the Soviet Union had begun spending millions each year on the study of psychic abilities and remote viewing, the ability to see locations far away via astral projection, on a project known as psychotronic research. In fear that the Soviet Union had learned of a new form of spiritual technology, the United States quickly funded and established Project Stargate, of which had the express purpose to also study the remote viewing phenomenon and use psychic soldiers as a method of retrieving information of captured prisoners of war, high value targets and preventable attacks. Research into remote viewing would begin back in 1972, at the Stanford Research Institute located out of Mellon Park in the state of California. The lead researchers Russell Targ and Harrod Puthoff required a minimum accuracy of greater than 65% success before an individual could be accepted into the research study, which claims that many of the participants far exceeded this percentage, 
but were not always 100% accurate with their guesses. Shortly after the project began, the team was able to locate a lost Soviet spy plane in 1976 by psychic participant Rosemary Smith, as well as additional claims of recovered POVs and high value targets over the years. Back in 1991, the remote viewers who had taken on to find the truth about what happened to the probe gave a report called Enigma Penetration. The report then went on to detail that the Soviet Phobos II spacecraft did in fact encounter a UFO, and that this craft had raised up from the Martian surface. The probe was able to quickly snap a photograph of the ominous looking craft, before everything was shut off. Those in the remote viewing program said the large craft had moved towards the probe as if inspecting it, but shortly after shot a particle beam device at the probe, which in turn caused it to malfunction. What's odd is that various remote viewers have come forward over the years and talked about similar instances, saying that anything we send into Earth is closely examined by non-human entities. The idea of there being alien life and UFOs out there has been the subject of much ridicule, but when you research the phenomenon you will find some high-ranking officials that have come forward and said we need to take sightings more seriously. In fact, one of these individuals was that of Lord Admiral Hill Norton, former Chief of Defence Staff, Five Star Admiral of the Royal Navy, and Chairman of the NATO Military Committee. He said the following, There is a serious possibility that we're being visited, and have been visited for many years by people from outer space, from other civilizations. This should be the subject of rigorous scientific investigation, and not the subject of rubbishing by tabloid newspapers. End quote. He also went on to say the following about the famous Rendlesham Forest event, which has gone down in history as being the UK's most compelling UFO incident, that wasn't just witnessed by military personnel, but also had information go missing shortly before investigations started to take place. When asked his opinion on the matter, he said the following, There are only two conceivable explanations. Either a UFO landed there causing the damage, or the United States Air Force Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, and several hundred of his men were hallucinating. End quote. Another interesting project was that of the Gateway Experience. Declassified back in 2003, a government document between an independent research and the United States Army commander showed undeniable proof of a strange CIA experiment, known as the Gateway Process Experience that was created to enhance the brain of an individual in the effort to give them mental superpowers that would help them achieve a higher mental capability than is capable for the average person. The document then ends with the researchers saying that the gateway process experience should be provided to all members of the organization for heightened mental ability. Although the document fails to elaborate on the finding, the memo then states the training could open up members of the gateway process to be attacked by intelligent energy beings, if the boundaries of time and space are continually surpassed. Stating in quotes, Subjects must be intellectually prepared to react to possible encounters with intelligent non-corporal energy forms, when time and space boundaries are exceeded. With additional statements that perhaps practical use of the gateway process experience, could be used to gather information from such entities and the universal consciousness. So what do you make of this mysterious photograph? And what do you think of the remote viewing project? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.